The government of Venezuela denounced that the recent fire in one of the medical supplies warehouses in Caracas was caused by the extremist forces. Mexico's Undersecretary of Human Rights, Alejandro Encina Rodriguez, said that the departure the disappearance of 43 students of Ayotzinapa was a state crime where members of the three levels of government are responsible. Spanish authorities reported that the forest fires in the Valencian community is moving southward and has so far consumed nearly 13,000 hectares. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Ana Marrero from the Telesur headquarters in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with the news. Stay with us. The government of Venezuela announces that uh, the recent fire in one of the medical supplies warehouses in Caracas was caused by extremist forces. Vice President Delcy Rodriguez detailed with evidence that an incident where medical supplies for the hemodialysis and perineal dialysis program were stored was a result of sabotage provoked by any political Venezuelan factors. The high official specified that investigation continues to determine the responsibility of those responsible and rejected that this added since it affects the Venezuelan people. According to photographic records, the authorities determined that it was an attack with the existence of fuels with at least five different outbreaks. So, we knew that extremist forces of the Venezuelan anti-politics do not rest. They do not get tired of understanding that the permanent message that the Venezuelan people have had of rejection to these violent ways of using these mechanisms to cause suffering, hardship and adversity to the Venezuelan people. I want to show you images of what happened here and today, Thursday, with evidence in hand. We can say that this fire was arson. It was not an accident. Colombian President Gustavo Petro asked on Wednesday for a treasured bad armed group so that public forces are mighty ill with the consequences of the rainy season. During a visit to Villavicencio, a city near Bogota, the president launched his proposal to the organizations with which he is exploring treatments of surrounding in exchange for criminal benefits. Pedro, from his proposal in view of forecasts of a strong winters, winter season in the coming months because of the water phenomenon La Niña in the Pacific Ocean, which entails at rainfall. On the other part, the National Liberal Army, ELN, Issue a communique saying that it had released six others and a policeman has unilateral humanitarian gesture and that they welcome the government's desire for peace. In Brazil, candidate Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva continues his campaign rallies in the city of Belo Horizonte with the additional security measures after receiving a telephone threat. Federal Police has reinforced security measures from this Thursday campaign evening in, event in the capital of Minas Gerais after receiving a threat about an alleged data with explosives to the venue of the event. The candidate of Workers' Paris continues to lead opinion polls and he is expected to beat current president and candidate for re-election Jair Bolsonaro in the third round. Several social and trade union organizations in Argentina are mobilizing to demand an universal salary and intensify price control in order to curb the inflation. The demonstrations, demonstrations organizers said that since the early morning hours, they gathered at the Aslin Square in Avellaneda, Buenos Aires, where the main event was to take place. The Central Workers Union of Argentina said the protest seeks to give continuity to the struggle initiated initiated on July 13 to demand concern measures to restore the case empowered. They specified through a community that they will ask the government for urgent answers for thousands of people, among them retired who are below the poverty and indigenous lines. 
Argentina has this Thursday an international seminar on regional integration organized by the community of Latin American the Caribbean State, Salada and the Latin American Development Bank. The virtual meeting will be headed by the Argentinian President Luis, uh, my partner Alberto Fernandez, participating in Participants include Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador, Barbados for Prime Minister Mia Motley, and former President Jose Pepe Mujica, Jose Luis Rodríguez Zapatero, Ernesto Samper, and Vincent Vinicio Cerezo. The seminar is called The Future of Integration, Unity, and Diversity, and it aims at sitting the stage of face to face summit of Salad and European Union Foreign Ministers to be held in Buenos Aires on October 27th. In Uruguay, the high school students in Montevideo call on the national students' body to pressure the executive branch to increase the budget allocations to the sector. The events occurred within the framework of the demands of different educational unions who rejected the reform to the sector proposed by the government of Luis Lacalle Pou. During the last few weeks, uh, the students have occupied various educational and teachers' training centers in the interior of the country as well as the National Teachers' Center in rejection of the executive measure. Mexico's Undersecretary of Human Rights, Alejandro Sina Rodriguez, said that the disappearance of the 43 student of Yoxinapa was a state crime where members of the three levels of government are responsible. The parents of the first three missing a job up students that met with President Andres Manuel López Obrador and federal authorities at the National Palace to learn about the process in the investigations three years after the beginning of the activities of the commissions for the threats and accesses to justice in the case. Headed by Alejandro Encinas Rodriguez, Undersecretary for Human, Human Rights, Population and Migration. At the end of the meeting, the federal official gave an extensive press conference in which he presented an extensive report with conclusions that points that the Mexican state is responsible for the disappearance and murder of both the 43 student as well as six other people related to the case. Panamanian social organizations once again call for a demonstration on Thursday asking for the government to comply with the agreements reached at the unified dialogue table. The protest takes place one day after the resumption of the unified table of dialogue in Penonome. According to social leaders, some of the demands that being discussed differed from the demands made by the Panamanian people. During the last negotiation seasons, the parties in conflict addressed the issue of government corruption and lack of transparency. In this context, the organizations announced that the Panamanian government has been acting in a way that adapts as surveyed to the interests of the oligio police and the private business sector. We'll take a short break now. Join us again after this. Welcome back to From the South. Spanish authorities reported that the forest fire in the Valencian community is moving southward and has so far consumed nearly 13,000 hectares. The outbreak has a bad win or the being the deal with it. The Erd Aland, the president of the Generalidad Valenciana, Ximo Pug, asked for the prudence and patience to the 1,500 neighbors evicted since the fire did not perimeter side uh, nor stabilized. The, the local authorities are keeping most of the accesses to the affected area close to minimize the risk of injuries. The heat wave and intense drought have caused thousands of foreign fires in Europe during the last months. Multiple forest fires were affecting the territory of Portugal on Wednesday as the country prepares for the new heat wave in the coming days. Reports are coming in for the fire that is uh, ranging in the areas of Caldas, that right now located uh, some uh, 
90 kilometers north of capital, Lisbon. Meanwhile, several crews are the trying to control the forest fires that has burned large extensions of pine forests in the Serra de Estrela National Park during the last 12 days. At the same time, Portuguese authorities announced on Wednesday that if a a firefighter that had died after suffering a heart attack while fighting the blaze. Unfortunately, we had that death suddenly. The spirit of the firefighters remains strong, certainly in pain but able to fight. You probably have witnessed the situation. We want to be sure that by tomorrow late morning we have it under control. It is currently an active and violent fire. It's burning eucalyptus. At a moment, we have 108 vehicles, 422 firefighters, and six aerial resources. Three people died and a thousand others who were injured when a violent thunderstorm hit the French island of Corsica on Thursday morning. According to local authorities, one of the 12 people injured was hospitalized and in critical conditions. The storm produced wind gusts of more than 300. 136 miles per hour in some areas, as informed by the French National Law Weather Agency, and about 45,000 households were without power in Corsica, according to French electricity company. Research operations were taking place along the western coast of Corsica to help several grunts and weak ships. The French Maritime Authority from the Mediterranean Sea tweeted, after the summon of, of a drug, uh, heat waves and four fires, a violent storm uh, had hit France and neighboring countries in recent days. In Europe, uh, high gas demands uh, due to hot temperature is the main cause of certain electricity tariffs. A city of European analytic firm State Energy revealed that electricity tariffs are the impact by the failing productivity of wind power plants, which currently contribute 9.1% of, of supply, in contrast to the plan range of between 11 and 20%, while gas imported from Moscow and Kiev through the Nord Stream pipeline remain limited. At its annual peak, electricity of the United Kingdom costs as much as 400 for 186 euros per megawatt, while Germany, France, and Italy it is expected is exceeding my pardon of 500 euros. At least 38 people have died and several thousands were injured in forest fires that affect 14 departments in northern Algeria, reviving the the Spectre that of the summer of 2021, the deadline in the country's modern history. Several people suffering burdens or breathing difficulties, but no new official figures as was given on the number of injured. According to local media, more than 350 families fled their homes in Sukheras. The gendarmes then closed several roads because of the fire. These uh, fires revived wounds and uh, the debate of lack of water bombers or crafts in sufficient numbers, which had already agitated the community last summer. The warming climate increased the livelihood of uh, heat wave and drug and internal fires. In China, at least 16 people were killed and 18 others were still missing on Thursday afternoon after the sudden storm in the east in the west of the country triggered a landslide that the earth revered and caused flooding in populated areas. Altogether, Wednesday night, the disaster affected more than 6,000 people in six villages in the province, according to Chinese state media. Likewise, uh, resources, uh, rescuers had found 18 of the reported missing people by early afternoon. China is facing heavy rains and floods in some parts of the country this summer and extreme heat and drought in other regions. And climate experts have described the heat and drought as worse since records began 60 years ago.
During his visit to Ukraine, the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres said that the world needs to curb off this region to face the global crisis. The diplomat pointed out on Thursday that, that there is no solution to the crisis unless full world access to products and fertilizers from Moscow and Kiev is guaranteed and added during his meeting with the President of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky, and Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, that more than 20 ships have left Ukrainian ports and another 15 from Istanbul, bound from Ukraine to allowed food since the treatment of grain was closed. Erdogan said that he intends to inform Russian President Vladimir Putin about the results of the meeting. Oh, we have more news coming up after this financial break, so don't go away. Welcome back. Sudanese protesters have taken to streets in Khartoum demanding a return to civilian rule after last year's military coup. Protesters were seen in the capital Khartoum carrying Sudanese flags and chanting no node to military rule and civilian rule is people's choice. Sudan has been rocked by nearly weekly practices and violent crackdown that has so far left at least 116 people dead since the army chief of the Farab al Buhar led a military coup last October. The takeover has disrupted the transition to, to civilian rule launch after the ouster of 2019 of three decades strongman Omar al Bashir. Early Thursday morning, the Israeli armor raid and shut down the headquarters of six Palestinian non governmental organizations in the city of Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. Israeli forces searched and closed the premises of NEO Al Qaeda, the Based on Research and Development Center, the Union of Palestinian Women's Committees, the International Children's Defense, the Union of Agricultural Work Communities, and the Association for Human Rights and Support for Palestinian Prisoners. In addition, the offices of the Health Work Committees were closed. The occupation army confirmed that closure of these entities after declaring them as terrorists in October 20. 21. These accusations have been rejected by the Israeli authorities, by the international organizations, and by the government of many European countries. On Wednesday, a group of Palestinians held a tribute to children killed by Israel during the latest bombing of the city of Gaza. Waving Palestinian flags and posters with face of the murdered children, dozens of people gathered on Gaza Beach to hail a commemorative ad and denounce the crimes of the state of Israel. Last August, the five Israeli bombardment of the, on the Palestinian coastal enclave killed 48 people, including 17 children, while injured in more than 300 people. In this context, humanitarian rights activists call for international protection for Palestinian citizens, especially children. Today, this mural depicts the names of 17 of our martyred children. It is 100 meters long and the first Palestinian mural to be realized. In Afghanistan, there are so far 21 dead and 33 wounded after a suicide bombing at the mosque in Kabul during the evening prayers on Wednesday. Among the dead was reportedly a prominent local cleric by the name of Mullah Mohammed Kabuli, according to the Taliban officials who spoke on conditions of anonymity. While no organizations have so far claimed responsibility for the attack, the local affiliated at the Islamic State group has set up attacks against the Taliban and civilians since the former the insurgent seized their power last August when U.S. and NATO troops were in the final stage of withdrawal from the country. It was evening prayer time, and I was attending the prayer with others when the explosion happened. It was a very powerful explosion inside the mosque. Around 24 to 25 people were murdered, and several others were wounded. In Sri Lanka on Thursday, a small student protest was met with tear gas and water cannon. This is the first demonstration since the state of emergency was lifted. An unprecedented economic collapse and sparkage any government rally is that this year is promoted by a month of hardship and sprawling inflation. 
the government had a curb this by imposing a state of emergency, which gave police sweden detention powers. The ordinances elapsed overnight. I'm several hundred students attempt to march to the city center in Colombo for a rally outside the railway station. However, they were the blood and dispersed by the police. Hello, so English continue to grow. This in Lunar reaches Europe, and you can order it from your cable dealer or tune it yourself. These panoramas that you see on the screen are in place as a lot of first and quite soon, but the changes will be implemented for the signal in the Middle East and Africa. Now, more than ever, the work connected to us and our stories are being heard all around the globe. This is multi platform will continue providing trustful content to oppose the Yemeni's media's narrative and our faithfulness to our audience. Well, sir, we have come to the end of this news brief, but you can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. You can also join us on our socials. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram as well. And now you can also follow us on TikTok, our account is Teles English, in which you will be able to see news in different formats, uh, news updates, and more. Teles English, I'm from the South, I'm Ana Marrero, and thank you for watching.